Hi folks, welcome to my first video tutorial. I thought I would add to the mini tutorials on YouTube by making my own, and I haven't seen anybody explain how to do this effect, um, so hopefully it's, it's something new to you and unique. Uh, I did get the idea from a website called motionsmarts.com. They have a few uh, tutorials there. Um, they're pretty neat, so check that out if you want. Anyway, this is the effect that I'm going to show you how to make. Pretty neat, eh? Anyway, let's open up Motion. And we'll start with a new project. And for the sake of ease, I'll just go with the default uh, NTSC broadcast standard definition dimensions. You can make whatever dimensions you, you can make your uh, template, whatever. It's not going to affect you following through. Uh, the tutorial so do whatever you like but I'm gonna go with the standard one anyway first thing you want to do is draw a bezier shape so either click the bezier tool right here or use the shortcut which it shows you in the little pop-up box uh, hit the B key so I'll do that hit the B key also bring up the layers tab um, you can do that by hitting command 4 um, or you can go to window and click layers and it gives you the shortcut right there as well Anyway, back to this. So you want to draw a shape. You kind of want to make it crazy. You can follow along and do something that mimics what I do, or you can make your own, but the crazier the better. Uh, the next thing you want to do is uh, select your Bezier layer, click Inspector, and on Style, you want to uncheck the Fill button and check the Outline. You just want the Outline. You don't want the Fill. Uh, let's set the Width down here to 4. And let's go back to our Bezier. Now we want to replicate it. So again, you can either click the Replicate tool up here, or you can hit the shortcut, which is L. So I'll hit L. Whew! That's a mess. Um, okay, so when, when you're in the Replicator layer, and you're on Replicator, what you first want to do is change the shape. You have line, rectangle, circle, burst, different shapes. Um, play around with them when you're done with this tutorial to see what kind of different effects you get, but right now we're going to go with Wave. Okay, now let's put all of them on a Wave line here. You can change the start point. And in fact, I'll do that. Just make it a little wider there. Uh, you can mess with the amplitude of the Wave shape. Uh, the amplitude changes the depth and height of the crest and trough, if you will, um, but it doesn't really matter. You can leave it where it is. 50 is okay. Uh, frequency, the amount of waves that you'll see between the start and end point, but uh, I think if we go with one, that'll be fine as well. I just wanted to demonstrate different effects. Um, phase is another thing you can mess with. That just changes the start and end point of where the wave is, like so. Again, we'll go back to zero. Uh, so the next thing you want to do is expand the points or increase the number of points. And what that's going to do is uh, increase the number of shapes that you've replicated. So let's make something like 100. Feel free to do as many as you want. doesn't matter. Uh, the last thing you want to do for now is either you can resize the shapes or um, you can click Align Angle. If you click Align Angle, the shapes are going to line up as the, uh, or they're going to line up along the wave line. Um, so you can either leave it like it is or click Align Angle. I think I'm going to leave it with Align Angle. We can always change it later, but to change the shape of the Bezier, you have to go back to the original Bezier shape. So click that layer down here, and as you can see, it's turned off, and go to Properties and scale it down a bit. Maybe something like 67. That's what I that's what mine's at, but do whatever you like. So let's go back to the replicator and click replicator. And you want to add a filter now. We're going to add a blur to it, so click add filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And now it's going to blur everything so you don't get that slinky looking effect there. So it's not going to look like a slinky anymore. 
Uh, the amount should be four. That's good for now. But you can lessen that to make it sharper if you want. Um, but I'll leave it at... Actually, I think I like two better. So we'll leave it at two. Um, and you can always go back and change your points if you want more points to give it a little less rigidness. You know, because if you decrease them, it looks more like a slinky. But anyway, so let's about right there, 124. Uh, so now, let's go down in your replicator layer. You're on replicator. So go to color mode, change that from original to colorize. And now you can color your shape. Um, doesn't really matter what color it is, but we'll just go with something like that. That's fine for now. Color it whatever you like, play around. Uh, and the last step is to click additive blend. What this does is um, it'll highlight the areas that overlap on your shape, so you get kind of a striation effect, and you get sort of a better contrast uh, looking thing. So that's pretty much the brunt of everything. And um, if you want, go back to your Gaussian blur, change the amount, it'll make it um, a little more sharp, as you can see. So uh, again, that's pretty much the end of it. However, you can add different things. Um, you can add a parameter effect to the replicator. You can change the angle end so that it kind of spins around over time. You know, and you can either do that by uh, hitting record and leaving it where it is, typing in um, an angle end to add a keyframe, and then drag your playback cursor to another point on the timeline and change the angle end. So now if you click off record and you hit play, your shape will move. Anyway, so to get the effect that I did in the beginning, uh, you can select your group, just highlight it, and click replicate, and then you'll replicate, obviously, the entire thing. Uh, and so what I did for that was, uh, for the uh, opening effect that I showed you, is I changed the shape to circle. And you're going to see that the points line up in a circle. And I didn't, I changed it from tile fill, which is, uh, obviously it puts them inside and at points along the circumference of the circle. But we're just going to do outline and it will lay, um, line them up all along the circumference. And I changed the points, I think, to about 8 or 9. Or maybe even 10. Let's just go with 10. So instead of doing circle as the shape, click burst. And then you want to change your points per arm down to 1. And then change your arms oh, to about 10 or so. And now you can see that they all move. Obviously, um, I did something different, and you can too, but uh, you can play around and experiment and get a number of different looks and feels, but overall, um, just play around and have fun. So, if you like it, comment, um, ask me any questions, hopefully I can answer, and see you soon.